Okay, welcome back to another video in my channel. It's your teacher, Mr. Lim here, and in this video, we're going to be looking at using congruence to investigate quadrilaterals. So by the end of this lesson, you'll be able to prove properties of quadrilaterals and test for a type of quadrilateral. Let's have a look at the first part of this lesson. Now, when proving properties of quadrilaterals, we must first prove that the two triangles that make up the quadrilateral are congruent. So once we've proved it, then we can establish properties of quadrilaterals. Now, opposite sides in a parallelogram are parallel. Prove that the opposite sides are equal. So the first thing I would do is I would um, draw my parallelogram. Okay, so here's a parallelogram. I know that opposite sides are parallel, so I'm just going to put those in. They are parallel, and these ones are parallel. Prove that the opposite angles are equal. So we need to prove that this is equal to this, and that this is equal to this, because they are opposite to each other. Now, how are we going to go about doing that? Well, remember what I said here. We must first prove that the two triangles that make up the quadrilateral are congruent. So I'm just going to create, um, I'm just going to draw a line in here. Okay, I'm going to call this A, B, C, and D. And I need to prove that these two triangles are congruent. How might I do that, you might ask? Let's first establish our formal proof. In triangle ABC and triangle CDA, what can I see? I can see that AC is common. This side here is common. What else can I see? I can see that this angle here is equal to this angle here. Right, because alternate angles are equal. So here's my Z. Alternate angles are equal on parallel lines, and those two lines are parallel. AB is parallel to DC. So I will say angle B, A, C is equal to angle D, C, A. Alternate angles are equal on parallel lines. What else can I see? I can see that this angle here is equal to this angle over here for the same reasons. If I were to draw a Z, I can see that those two angles are alternate. And because those two lines AD and BC are parallel, they have to be equal to each other. So I'm going to say angle DAC is equal to angle BCA. Alternate angles are equal on parallel lines. Therefore, triangle ABC has to be congruent to triangle CDA. For what reason? What's the test? Well, it has to be, we've got two angles on one side. So it has to be A, A, S. Okay, we've got a side, and we've got two angles. So the test is A, A, S. Okay, now that we've proven that the two, um, that the two triangles are congruent, we need to prove that the opposite angles are equal. All right, so I'm going to create a little bit more space here. I'm 
I'm going to say, therefore, this angle here has to equal to this. Angle ABC has to equal to angle ADC. Because they correspond to each other in these um, congruent triangles. Corresponding angles. In congruent triangles are equal. Okay, because they match each other, that's what the word corresponding means. Because they match each other, they have to be equal to each other because the two triangles are congruent. However, we still need to show that these two angles are equal to each other. Angle DAB and angle BCD. So we don't actually need to prove that anymore, but we can just write um, a concluding statement. Similarly, in triangle ABD and triangle B, um, BCD, so if we were to draw another line here to split them up, so we've got this triangle and this triangle over here, we can say that they are also equal. Or should I say congruent? Angle DAB is equal to angle BCD for the same reasons corresponding angles in congruent triangles are equal. Okay, let's uh, move on to the next question. So now we're going to use the, proper, uh, the property that opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal to prove that a rectangle with all angles 90 degrees has diagonals of equal length. So I'm going to draw my rectangle. Um, we're going to use the property that opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal. So this side is equal to this side. And this side is equal to that. Um, we know that all of these angles are 90 degrees. But what we need to prove is that the diagonals are of equal length. That this diagonal here is equal to this one. So I might see if I can construct a straight line. Okay. So let's call this a B, C, and D. So I'm going to have a look and prove that I'm going to prove that this triangle here is congruent to this one. Because once I've done that, then I can tell that the two hypotenuses have to be equal to each other, and therefore the diagonals are equal. So in triangle ACD and triangle BDC. Okay, so I went from A to C, that's the um, hypotenuse, B to D, that's the hypotenuse. Right, what can we see? We can see that AD is equal to BC because that's given to us. We can see that CD is common. Here, that bottom line here, that bottom edge, that's common. And what else can we see? We can actually see um, that they both have right angles. So angle ADC 
is equal to angle BCD. I'll just write here, which is equal to 90 degrees. And that's given to us. And therefore, these two triangles are congruent. Triangle ACD is congruent to triangle BDC. And what's the test? Well, we've got a side, we've got an angle, and then we have a side. So this has to be SAS because the angles in between the two known sides, SAS, the angles between the two sides. All right, now that we've proven that these two triangles are congruent, we can now say that the diagonals are of equal length. Therefore, AC is equal to BD because the corresponding sides or the matching sides are equal in congruent triangles. And I'm going to write one more. Therefore, diagonals in a rectangle are of equal length. Okay, let's move on to the second part of this lesson which is testing for a type of quadrilateral. Prove that if opposite sides of a quadrilateral are equal, then it is a parallelogram. So this time, um, we've got a shape. We know that the opposite sides are equal, but we need to prove that the opposite sides are actually also parallel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to label this A, B, C, D. Okay, and I need to prove that the two triangles are congruent. So in triangle ABD and triangle CDD, okay, so I'm proving that this triangle here is congruent to this one. What can we see? We can see that uh, DB is common. We can see that AD is equal to BC because that's given to us. We can see that AB is equal to DC. That's also given. And therefore, the triangles have to be congruent. S, S, S. Well, now that we've proven that they are congruent, that means that this angle here has to equal to this one because they match each other. And that means that this angle here has to match this angle there because they are corresponding angles. So, therefore, angle BDC, we'll start with the axis, is equal to angle um, ABD. Corresponding angles are equal in congruent triangles. And therefore, we can say that um, AB has to be parallel to DC. <clears throat> Why? Because only, um, only al alternate angles are equal on parallel lines. Okay, alternate 
tables are equal on parallel lines. Because we can tell that they are alternate angles, if they weren't equal, then AB is not parallel to DC. But because they are equal, um, the line AB and the line DC, they both have to be parallel to each other. And now we can say the same thing for the other one, for O. So I'll say um, angle DOC, sorry, not O, DBC is equal to angle BDA for the same reasons. Corresponding angles, because they match each other are equal incongruent triangles. And therefore, AD has to be parallel to BC. For the same reasons, they are alternate angles, and only alternate angles are equal when the lines are parallel. And now I can have my concluding statement. Therefore, if opposite sides of a quadrilateral are equal, it is a, parallel, a parallelogram. Spell. Okay, last one for this video. Prove that if the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other at right angles, then it is a rhombus. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label this A, B, C, D, and E. And I'm going to try and prove that these two triangles here are congruent. After that, I need to prove that that one is congruent with this one. And then I can say, oh, therefore, um, that triangle there is congruent for the same reasons as the first time. And therefore, all of these four sides are equal to each other because they're all congruent to each other and therefore it's a rhombus. Okay, so let's start off with this first bit. In triangle, oh, I forgot to label that E, A, B, E, and triangle. C, D, E. You can see that A, E is equal to C, E. And that's given to us. We can see that B, E is equal to D, E. And that's given to us. And we can see that angle A, E, B is equal to angle D, E, C because vertically opposite angles are equal. And therefore these two triangles are congruent. SAS. Alright, we've proven that those two are congruent and therefore we can say that AB is equal to DC. Right, so we can now say that this one here is equal to that. Right, 
The next thing we're going to do is we're going to prove that this triangle here is congruent to this one here. Let's do that in red. In triangle um, ABE and triangle ADE we can see that AE is common we can see that BE is equal to DE and that's given to us and we can also see that angle AEB is equal to angle, so this angle here, AEB, is actually equal to angle AED. Not because it's given, right? We, um, yeah, angle uh, AED. Not because it's given, but because of the angle sum of a um, straight line is 180 degrees, and because we know that this one is 90, the other one has to be 90 as well. Angle sum of a straight line. And therefore, triangle ABE has to be congruent to triangle ADE for the same reason as AS. And therefore, AB has to be equal to AD. Because they are corresponding sides. Incongruent triangles. So can draw my three lines in there as well. I should actually um, use the same reasoning for this one here, that corresponding sides are equal in congruent triangles. And actually, after the first proof, when we prove that these two are congruent, we can actually say similarly, these two therefore have to be congruent to each other. So I'm just going to write that underneath um, all the black writing. Similarly, triangle ADE has to be congruent to triangle CBE. Alright, now that we've done that, we can um, have a concluding statement. Therefore, AB has to equal to BC, which is equal to CD, and AD. And therefore, if diagonals are quadrilateral, bisect each other at right angles. It is a wrong list. Okay, so hopefully now you know how to prove properties of quadrilaterals and test for a type of quadrilateral. Um, I hope you found this video helpful. Um, thanks.